tonight on Teen Voodoo Adventures. It actually breaks my heart to see somebody put that kind of line in the water. Dude, you know how many animals can get in there, get all tangled up and get hurt? <laughs> well, boys and girls, the Sandman put one down today. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> All that and more, next. Take a ride down any canal or bayou in the Atchafalaya Basin and you're bound to see one, if not tons of gators, all sizes, swimming alongside you. Well, we're back on the waterways tracking these monsters down. Only this time, we're trying a slightly different method than just throwing a treble hook. Yes, that's a custom built 300 wind mag you're looking at. And I don't have to tell you, this puppy's got reach and power. I call him the Sandman for putting critters to sleep. Back under the interstate, we cruise past our normal stomping grounds just to see if anything's floating around. After a thorough check, we head deeper into the bayou. good in the scope. That one, the head right there? Yeah, well I mean, because I'm zoomed in. He questioned if he needed to go down. <laughs> Yeah, 
Dog's not bad, bud. Spotting a few good looking gators, we stalk them a little while before giving the old treble hook a few more throws. He does look like a tank. Huh? Although the gloves help, they are torn to pieces right now. Dude, there's a bunch of trash on the bottom right here. I drag the bottom with hooks all the time, and it, it, it's, it actually breaks my heart to see somebody put that kind of line in the water. Dude, you know how many animals can get in there, get all tangled up and get hurt? It's one thing to harvest a gator, to, to harvest an animal to eat, okay? But if you do this and you're killing them with no purpose, you know, I still, I still like to, uh, you know, conserve the resources that we do have. And to find that much line that somebody just threw in the water. I mean, go home guys, throw it in the trash can, dispose of it the right way. This stuff is gonna last forever, okay? <sighs> Too much trash. When you're stalking a gator and you've gotten close enough to spook them under the water, this is a telltale sign that you found them. When a gator is moving quickly across the bed of the swamp, it kicks up trapped oxygen and gas in the sediment underneath the water, sending a stream of bubbles up to the surface in the exact direction the gator is heading. I like to call these shore bubbles because you surely know where he's going after you see them. So I think this is somebody's net that I've hooked. If I could get my... It's a net. Somebody dropped it out of their boat. I know this wasn't intentional. There we go. It's somebody's fishing net. Out of all the things I've caught, fishing net <laughs> not one of them well if you lost your fishing net if you lost your net <laughs> give me a call and come get it I can't found it for you got the sleeve and all for it you, sometimes people throw stuff intentionally and sometimes stuff is accidentally and I know this is accidentally because it was perfectly it was it was perfect still a good net, you know? That's how it goes. Now let's try to catch that alligator. 
After an impromptu cleanup of the swamp, we finally spot a bad boy swimming in the area. Setting up on the bank with the rifle gave us the opportunity to put eyes on him, size him up, and make the shot. He's done. You saw the legs? <laughs> oh my god. That's good. Let's go check that out. We gotta go get it now. <laughs> you did hit him? Yeah, I hit him. <laughs> Gotta remember where this one's at. Yeah. I'm by the post and stuff. This one. Right here. Let's hit him right here. Ho oh, oh. ho. <laughs> well, boys and girls, the Sandman put one down today. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. You ain't gonna go nowhere. <laughs> While this may have been our only haul for the day, this guy measured in at almost 11 feet. Not too bad of a job for the old Sandman too. This might be a useful method for the remainder of the season. Time to put a tag on this bad boy. And after the break, we'll show you how to process a gator too. Stick around. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, guys, we're over here at Guardian Preservation Systems today. I'm here with Jim and Josh, and they're gonna show us exactly what their product does. Certainly. What we have here is a moisture barrier material, and what we're gonna do is package up any type of equipment, uh, electronics, pumps, anything you can think of for long-term storage. Our process uh, involves uh, purging with inert gas. What that does is removes all the oxidizing agents from the atmosphere. That item cannot be stored long-term without any risk of corrosion, moisture, debris, anything like that. Is there any size restrictions on the products? Can it be real small? Can it be real big? Or is there certain sizes y'all can and can't do? We can go from anything as small as you can imagine, basically up to the size of a vehicle or even bigger if you'd like. How long does the material actually protect what you're putting inside of it? It's, uh, it's indefinite. Once this item's stored and created, as you see uh, in the process we're about to do here, there's really no time limit to it. Uh, basically what we'll do is gonna actually purge inside of this bag with nitrogen. And at that point, uh, we actually use our meters and sensors to detect how much moisture is left inside. At that point, once we uh, find an acceptable level, we'll actually go ahead and vacuum seal that equipment. Um, basically at that point it's preserved. So Mr. Jim, once this is all done, how do you know what's inside the bag if you have several products? Oh, good question. Let me show you on this finished product over here. On every package we do, we put one of our Guardian chips on. I've got a, a little app on my phone that'll read that chip. I can come up and scan it. Within just a few seconds, it'll pull up any documents, pictures that we put on here. Here's the meters before, a picture of the gearbox, the finished wrap product. All that information is right here, basically on the chip, where we've got all the pictures, the documents, inspection reports, steel mill certifications, hydro testing reports, whatever the client wants to give us to associate with that Guardian chip. So y'all could have a hundred, if not more, boxes all the same size. Right. All you need is that little chip on there and you can walk through your warehouse and see exactly what's in every single box. That's correct. That is awesome. Yes, sir. So uh, Jude, one other thing we do is we build crates to fit the equipment. Like these crates here we built with the okay. cornerstone uh, valve seats. We build vinyl jackets oh, goodness. to fit. Okay, this is a 50 by 35 foot jacket here for a customer, but we build custom fit jackets for single flying lead, rail covers, calm buoys, any, any type of equipment that needs to be protected from the UV. Make a great fit for boats and ATVs as well. So any size. Any, oh any size. Golly. Any size. Check them out, guardianpreservation.net. And remember, you know the line. Team Voodoo knows how to get around South Louisiana, and that's in a Chevrolet Silverado Z71, nicknamed Ogin. Server Chevrolet Cadillac is your access to the latest and greatest Chevy has to offer. Located on Ambassador Catholic, this is your one-stop shop for Cadillac and Chevrolet. Stop in today and let them put you in your next adventure. There are many desired parts of the alligator once it's ready for processing. Everything from the hide to the meat, the head, the feet, and so on. Today, our friend Pat Hardy with Swamp Gear and his Pyran are going to give us a good rundown on the choice cuts of meat and how to skin out the proper hide for tanning. Something that they probably don't serve you at the restaurant. It's getting deep in here. That's all fat. In the tail. Yep. It's like the filet mignon on a cow. 
right. Yeah. It's hidden underneath all this crap. So this right here? Yeah. That's the only, that best part of the alligator, but the only part, the only good part. That's the cheek. Look at the fat on this one, though. This is a healthy Look at the cheek. Oh, wow. Normally when I be cleaning, you gotta, this is meat and right. this is fat. So to get this meat, you gotta cut all the fat pieces off of it. And it just takes a, you know, it just takes a long time. And if you if you get any of this fat, if you forget to cut any of that off, it makes the whole alligator, you know, whatever you cook. It rancid. Rancid. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, so you gotta be very careful. What they do is they'll take the tail and they'll cut steaks. So a cross section of it is, is a layer of meat, a layer of fat, layer of meat, layer of fat, and then you get to the muscle. But the muscle, see there's no fat in here, this is just pure oh, yeah. muscle, so once you get it nice and clean, there's no more, nothing else you have to do with it. Wow. Just wash it off and, and then watch, you just gonna pull it out like a, like a sausage. Like a back strap. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. yeah. The only part that I really care to do anything with. <laughs> Are you ready for the money shot? Yep. pressure lock to don't open it on the vacuum seal so instead of having to undo the drain plug like you do on some of the others this is a pressure release valve you can hear it equalize and the vacuum that way, oh, that way you know it's getting a hundred percent seal and none of your you know your, your cold air is leaking out none of the hot air is leaking in Why? So we're doing the uh, we're doing the horn. Uh -huh. Ah, we're doing the belly. We're doing the belly. So basically, doing the belly. yeah, to do the belly, which is different than the than the other one, you make your cuts from the middle of the legs straight down, and then we follow. I like to catch this first set of scutes right here for the reason that whenever you bring them to the tannery, when they stretch the skin, they normally have to drill holes. So some people cut right up below the bottom, but when they drill the holes, you lose about a half inch of skin. If you leave this first set of scutes on. Get your whole, you know, nice. good set of skin there. I really like using these beaver tail knobs, especially whenever you're working around like the softer pieces. Whenever you're using a tip sometimes, if you accidentally slip, it can puncture the skin. Right. With these beaver tail knobs, it prevents that from happening. So you'll see whenever we work on the thinner pieces, we tend to use them. We call this system our Cajun Ingenuity. <laughs> it, took a few, it took a few years to perfect it. Little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, hold it, little bit. Little bit, little bit, hold it. Little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. Go. Go ahead. Give us some juice. Go ahead. Go. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> 
Perfect, perfect time. <laughs> what happened, bro? I wasn't even pressing it. You got stuck? Yeah, you got stuck. Okay, back up. All right. Hey, look at that flash job. That's bad. That's badass. Now that this meat is all separated and clean, it's transferred into a swamp box. And now it's ready for grills and kitchens in any town USA. For many more adventures in the swamp, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow the adventure every day on Facebook and Instagram. This is Jude Mike reminding you to keep our swamp clear of your trash. See you next time. <sighs> Too much trash. If you want to You got to give all your heart If you want to You got to give all your heart If you want to Be set free Sister said now.